Welcome, welcome, welcome to the Patient First Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Brian Laskin, where, of course, we're looking to increase the influence of today's engaged dentists. And today, we are discussing reviews, patient reviews, and why your best and worst reviews don't matter as much as the, eh, reviews. The mediocre ones, I think, are the most important ones for you to pay attention to. Obviously, we want to have a lot of five-star reviews, and I'll talk about that in a little bit. But the mediocre reviews, I think, are the most important ones for you and your team to pay attention to. So first, let's start, start talking about there's only three platforms that matter. In 2022, it is Google, Facebook, and your website. Google, Facebook, and your website. There are a lot of other people that sell a lot of other stuff, let's call it, right? Things like you know, there's a lot of marketing garbage, frankly, that you can ignore. Yelp is a cesspool that's decreasing in effectiveness every single day. Now, there's those stupid microsites, as we've talked about on the podcast before, that a review platform says you need to be on patient360happyhappy.com to get to maximize your SEO. That is a bunch of garbage. Thinking that some SEO for some website is more important than getting seen directly on Google today is just someone trying to sell you something. So the three platforms that matter, in my opinion, are Google, Facebook, and your website. Everything else is not secondary. It is doesn't matter. It's, it's either dying or dead. So maybe there'll be some new thing. Maybe you need to put your reviews on TikTok next week. But right now, the way I see it in 2022, focusing on Google, Facebook, and your website is what makes sense. So that means that on your website, you should have 10 or more short testimonials, ideally with pictures. It's the most powerful way to leverage your reviews is with those short testimonials because people have short attention spans, right? People have the attention span of a gnat today and they like to buy from other people. It's kind of like the referrals of today. If John moves to town and talks to Susie and Susie says, oh, you should go see Johnson Dental. Well, the next thing John's going to do is go to Johnson Dental's website and look and see testimonials, which are your reviews. So just take short snippets because nobody wants to read a paragraph. Dr. Johnson is the best. Five stars with a picture. Great. So, so on your website, it doesn't even matter how old they are, frankly, because the same people is you're really looking to impress that new patient going to your website. So just get 10 great testimonials that are short. Take a picture of the patient, have them sign a release form, or else not have a, you know, just say Kelly J and put it on the website. So short and sweet is the key, and then having a picture is even better. So with that said, let's talk about the reviews on Google and on Facebook. It's the best reviews that you get are five-star reviews, obviously, or you know, depending on the platform. But Google and Facebook, it's five stars. And these are likely the most common reviews because people don't necessarily want to go online and complain about you. People do, however, if you ask them, do want to go on and say nice things about you. So this can be the content for your testimonials on your website. But the real value here on these platforms is the volume of five-star reviews that you can get. Because again, this is the referral source in 2022. So testimonials on your website, but the referral source is on, on Facebook and Google. Because if you think about it, if you go online and, and you're going on Amazon and you're gonna buy a new pen, for, for example, and there's five five-star reviews, but then there's another pen that has 10,000 four, four and a half stars, you're going to probably buy the one that has 10,000 reviews. So the volume of five-star reviews is incredibly important. So on your website, it's the short, sweet testimonial. On Google and Facebook, you're looking to get as many reviews as possible. Also, we need to consistently be getting five-star reviews to negate the power of our second discussion item when it comes to Facebook and Google, and that is the dreaded bad review. One star. I see dentists who have a thousand five-star reviews and they get one neg one one-star review and they freak out, right? We all do because we all look at the negative as how we can improve or we're worried about people reading that bad review, right? Well, 
typically this is some crazy town patient who never even came into your practice. They probably called the front desk and somebody on your business team said they don't take their insurance and they just went online and gave you a one-star review. In short, who cares, right? You should care if it's truly negative feedback, but these one-star reviews are very, very rarely constructive feedback. It's usually somebody crazy or somebody who's mad about some financial thing that you can just respond positively uh, uh, saying that you know, you're know sorry you had a bad experience. We make sure that we have the best experience for our patients, blah, 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 and have it be buried by 20 other positive five-star reviews, right? So the purpose of a bad review, of a one-star review, is to bury it and to respond positively to it. One bad review in a hundred reviews doesn't matter. But if you only get five reviews, one is bad, well then you've got some trouble, right? So, so make sure to respond positively online and make sure that you're generating consistent five-star reviews, both so you can get those referrals from people wanting to see a lot of positive feedback and also so you can negate the rare, but once, but the, we all get them, right? There, every practice, you know, you see enough patients, there's going to be a few that are going to just be a little wacky. And you might not even see them. Like I said, I see a lot of people complaining online about re reviews by patients. And that review starts off with, I didn't even get into the practice, right? No reasonable person is going to listen to that review and not come into your practice. In fact, if they do, you don't probably want that referral patient anyway. So that's bad reviews and how to view the rare, rare one-star review. We want to bury them with five-star reviews and respond positively to them. Next up is what I let off this podcast talking about, what I think is the most valuable reviews you get. Oftentimes, these are coming directly to you, not going onto the platforms, but this is the four-star review. The four-star review is typically your best patients or the people that, that you value their opinion, but there's an aspect of your practice that they think they can give you feedback on so that you can have a 10-star, five-star experience, right? This is the negative feedback that you really want to pay attention to. This is the patient that's reasonable, but it's likely pointing out a problem that you can address. It's, this is the time to set aside your ego and really focus on the feedback. Four-star reviews aren't bad. They're great because they tell you probably what you should be focused on. Oftentimes, they won't leave these reviews online, so you have to also solicit feedback internally so you can get the direct feedback and address them. So if you have a 10-star review system, if it's a seven or eight or a nine, those are great feedback comments to listen to. If it's online, Google or Facebook, and it's a four-star review, that's really what you look, look at. This is the best feedback from patients that want to let you know about an issue to address directly. Maybe they had a hygienist that was a little rough or, or they didn't receive their, they, they, they want to be able to pay their bill online and you don't have that. Well, those are those are things to address in your practice. And this isn't just some crazy person that's mad that you don't take their insurance. This is real feedback that you want to take a look at, which is why I think it's the most valuable type of review to listen to. Oftentimes, the source of this negative feedback is the business team behind your front desk, right? They are oftentimes, when people have a problem, it's usually, I find, due to financial arrangements. And, and so having the people at the front desk, your business team, solicit this feedback, read the feedback, sometimes isn't the best because you want to be able to get the feedback about what's going on at the business team too. So make sure you automate feedback that you get directly feedback from the patient. You, you can, you know, there's many, many platforms that do this, but make sure that you have access to all of the comments. And then again, one comment doesn't a rule make, but just see how things go over time and really pay attention to those ones that are almost five stars, but not quite there. If you like the podcast, I'd appreciate if you comment, like, and subscribe. I'm trying to do my best to increase the influence of today's engaged dentists. And today it's about reviews. So make sure to hit us up with a review if, if you could. Uh, thank you very much. And I look forward to seeing you in our next podcast.